this is the title, but I want to begin by telling you what my goal today is. And what I'd like to achieve is to have you, like when the, when the presentation ends and when you go home and when you think about it, I want you to gain at least one item that you can act on. Actionable is my favorite word. So I'm, I'm going to be pointing you towards paths and kind of giving you options so you can, you can walk away from it and say, OK, this is something that I should look into or that I can implement in my life. So in the, in the previous presentation, my level of uh, kind of skepticism and carefulness towards any text has skyrocketed. I'm also very afraid now that my own text will get analyzed. But uh, yeah, that's, that's part, of the, part of the trade. So what I'm looking to find out here is, is there a reason why anarchism and personal development are connected? Are they a good fit together? I personally am very interested in both, so that kind of betrays the answer there. But I want to look into why it works together and what pitfalls there are. And uh, Jana told me that usually when there's a question, uh, the answer is always a no. Uh, well, that's not true anymore. <laughs> and um, they are connected. And um, I don't know, maybe we could talk about the NAP or something. This is kind of a rookie mistake. You don't test your presentation. And then you kind of left, left with stuff like that. Oh, OK. All right. OK, we'll, we can work with that. So what I want you to do is I want to start with kind of a game. And that game is, I'm going to be sh showing people to you. But first, I want you just to raise your hand like this, fight the power style. Can everybody do that for me? OK, thanks a lot. And you're going to use, keep it, keep it raised, keep it raised, please. You're not forced to, you know, not my style. But if you want to, yeah. Uh, and we're, you're going to be counting for yourself. And I can also see how many of these people you know. So if you get the one, that's one, two, three, and it keeps on going like that. I'm going to, I hope I, I put five and not more because we're going to get into trouble otherwise. OK, uh, round one. Do you know this guy? If you do, just give, give you, it's not an endorsement. You just, just give, <laughs> give him a thumbs up. OK, uh, who can tell me? Uh, it's glad the contrast might be a problem, but can, can everybody see the guy OK? OK, uh, who is he? Sorry? If I'm not sure, do I put half a finger? I'll reveal it, and then you decide. OK, who is he? OK, are any of you fans of Gary Johnson? Yeah. More or less, OK. Uh, that's correct. And. OK, I'm going to give you some facts about him very quickly. So you can uh, keep, keep, keep it up, please. Keep it up. <laughs> OK, I just want to tell OK, so you know him, but how much do you know about him? So what fact comes to mind about Gary Johnson right now? What's the most actual thing? Libertarian. Yeah, libertarian. Anything else? Is he an important libertarian right now? Oh, yeah, and getting used to the technology here. OK, I hope you like that uh, effect, because it's, it's the only one I use. OK, the next one. Anything else that comes to mind? Does anybody know which uh, state's governor he was? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, strong, strong. OK, and the last one, I'll just, I'll just put it in. Bake the cake. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. Google it if you don't know it. OK, so how many thumbs do we have? Is it? Uh, it's like a 50%, maybe even more. OK, next one. Who is she? OK, correct. Let's look at, some, at how much you know about her. What is she? Why is she famous right now? Green Party. Green Party. Candidate for the election, all right. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of skipped my research on her. So <laughs> instead, I'm going to do uh, German puns. So Jill Stein, she is the cornerstone 
of the Green Party Master Plan, and she will rock the establishment. Although uh, uh, her and uh, Gary Johnson combined have a 0.1 probability of winning, so not sure about that. Okay, how many twos do we have? Yeah, pretty high. I think it's still around 50%. Okay, this guy. Anybody? Yeah, that is the point. Okay, why is he famous for? Why do you, how do you know him? Any, why, any reason why he's popular right now, or he was popular up to recently? That's it, the Republican, one of the primary candidates, and uh, he won one state. Which one was it, does anybody know? Oh yeah, that's a very, very well educated. Okay, and the last one is, does anybody know, I have to remember, <laughs> does anybody know how he called himself? What was his, his branding for himself in this election? No? Okay, I'll give it to you. It's very nice, I think. I mean, he kind of missed the year, but uh, <laughs> he is the Prince of Light and Hope. Okay. Keep the hands up. Keep the hands up. Okay. This, it's getting tough here, so the people who know this guy, okay, Ross Perot, I'm very impressed. This, this is getting pretty esoteric here. Okay, what is, who is Ross Perot? What is he famous for? Oh, yeah. Okay, what is the 19? Was he successful? Did he win? 90%, yeah, 90%. Yeah, so he wasn't successful, but one of the best independent candidates from 1992, and overall in history, very rare. Okay, and the last one is his profession. What is, what is his profession? Yeah, very good. That's correct. Okay, I, I can see that on the politic front, politics front, we're very solid here. And uh, yeah, one of the richest ones, by the way. That's Trump, or more, more or less than Trump, uh, kind of depends on the source. Okay, this one is like expert level. Who knows this one? Anybody? Sir? No. He was, okay, I'll give you the facts. He was a very influential candidate, especially in the libertarian movement. He lost pretty badly, but he kind of shaped things. Okay, I'll just, I'll just give it to you. So we'll have some fours and no fives. He's Barry Goldwater. Uh, yeah, this is, I guess, uh, my Wikipedia rumbling there. So uh, 1964, uh, that was his slogan. It's kind of fuzzy to me. In your heart, you know he's right. And uh, yeah, he was, he was uh, very influential, and you can read all, all, up all about it. Okay, so can, can I see the hands? What, are, what is the score? Okay, so I see like three, two, three, four. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Okay, we covered politics. Next round. This guy, who is this guy? We, we're resetting the score. Remember what you had, next one. Okay, who's this guy? Okay. Uh, this, this is the, the easy one, right? Okay. Can you guess it from the letter? Oh, yeah, good. Okay, and the next one, um, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> there you go, yeah, Fallon Holes, famous anecdote about him. Uh, he was so involved in thinking about his theory, no, actually explaining it to someone that he actually fell in, in, a, in a big hole in, in Scotland, which kind of reminded me of yesterday's walk. I think, you know, there's, there's a similarity in, in personalities here. And the three, uh, the three is he has, uh, this is just pure economics geek stuff, he has three uh, contradictory theories of value in the wealth of nations, and none of them is correct, so, yeah. Okay, next guy. Okay, solid, solid. Book? Okay. Um, I can't, I need notes for this one. Okay, yeah, 
Do you know the use of knowledge in society? Who knows the use of knowledge in society? It's a very famous article in which he explains why a planned economy cannot work. And another famous idea, worst, it begins with worst. Why the worst get on top? Yeah, uh, that's his argument that in a totalitarian regime or even one going towards it, uh, the people who will get to the top will always be the most ruthless and uh, least moral. And uh, I like that. That's a cool anarchist argument. Okay, third guy. Friedman. Friedman. Uh, are, you, are we still playing this? Okay, good. Cool. Milton Friedman. Uh, that's one of his books, the first one. Oh, yeah. What's the other famous one? Free to choose, and capitalism and freedom is the other one. But yeah, he's the Chicago School of Economics, and he had some ideas that you know were. The, the, are you familiar with his idea on the minimum guaranteed income? Yeah, his point was that I mean it's not it's not great, but at least you re replace the welfare state. But by the time it got to the legislature. Uh, it, they just said, okay, we're going to have the welfare state and minimum guaranteed income. So uh, that's what happens when you get involved in politics. Okay, fourth one. They are very solid on economics. Like politics was strong, but uh, economics is, is, is winning. Okay, uh, he's the only one who deserved these colors so far. Why is that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, what is... His book on ethics, do you know it? Where he talks about natural law and how you get libertarianism. For... The ethics of liberty. Yeah. And what's his book on <laughs> economics? The <coughs> textbook one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. And this is like the pro level. Who knows this guy? Yes. Karl Menger. Why is he famous? All right. Uh, which theory of value? Marginalism. Okay, cool. I'm done with that. And which theory of, uh, of value did he have? All right. Okay, so very strong economics base here. Okay, so we covered anarchism, I would say, and politics, things like that. Let's move on to personal development. Final round. Who's this guy? Yeah, that's Nathaniel Brandon. Okay. Why is he famous for? How did he start his career? Yes. Yeah, the six pillars of self-esteem. That's correct. And objectivism. Uh, he was one of the, like if you're f fans of Ayn Rand, <coughs> if he wasn't around, it's very possible that you would not have heard of it, um, of her. Uh, he promoted it extensively, then broke up with objectivism or the, that community and started, became a what? Became, what, what was his profession? Psychology. Yeah, I, I just wrote psychology. Okay. So we got Brandon. Who's this guy? Tim Ferriss. Does anybody know, else know this guy? Two? Anybody else? Three? Tim Ferriss. Okay. Yeah, and he's showing the four. What is the four? Four hour work week. Okay, so if this guy, if you search for him, he can teach you theoretically how to run a business in four hours per week. Now, he's a pretty flashy guy, so you don't, I wouldn't take it out 100%, but he has very cool techniques to do that. Okay. Uh, he has the model of lifestyle business, which can help you if you get into it, you can, the idea is you can be almost like retired because you're working so little. And finally, he, he's also focused on how to learn anything and he kind of hacks the processes and, and learns things very, very fast, such as languages. So that's, that's somebody to look out for. Okay, who's this guy? Anybody know him? Uh, Jake, I put Jake in. I mean, he's, he's not as famous as Tim Ferriss, but he is a voluntarist 
guy who's also into personal development. Why is he, why is he famous? What's his claim to fame, Andre? Yeah, that's, that's his podcast. All right. Uh, what did he do? That's very impressive. Does anybody know? Here's another guy who, I don't know, in his 40s, doesn't have to work anymore. Real person, not marketing. Built a business, sold it, now lives on the investment income. And finally, uh, he has a book that I recommend, which is called Job Free, Four Ways to Quit the Rat Race and becoming an entrepreneur is one of them. Really nice guy, uh, check him out. Okay, this one is hard. Anybody know this guy? Yeah, um, there, there are no good pictures of this guy, but he's called Jacob Lund Fisker. Does that ring a bell to anybody? Okay, well, Jacob Lund Fisker wrote a book called Early Retirement Extreme. He's one of, I, I'm focusing here on personal finance, on, on, this, on this round here, retired in five years on an average income. The key of it, the key to doing it is just saving a lot of money, saving a very high percentage of his income, 70 to 90%, another tool that you can think of. And by the way, if you're kind of into philosophy and, and frameworks and things like that, this book is, is a very academic, <laughs> you will like it very much. And yeah, it took, took him five years to financial independence. And finally, this guy, I think you, you might know this guy. I saw a lot of Evernote, and this guy has a technique that's often used with Evernote, a personal productivity technique. Okay, it, which is, this guy is called David Allen, and his technique is called getting things done. Maybe you've heard of it? Yeah. If you haven't, look into it. Uh, the subtitle of the book is The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, and I endorse it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's my point with this game? I want to see where you are in terms of these different subjects. I want to draw attention to the fact of how much actionable information there is out there that you, you know, after you've, you've done your politics, you've done your economics, these are stuff that can really get your life boosted. And when I mean personal development, that's not a typo, by the way, that's using one word, previous presentation, so I kind of combined it. It's the systematic pursuit of building broadly applicable high impact life skills. This is my definition, so. You know, that's how I use it. Uh, the key here is I will use this to differentiate it from other skills. So I would put something in the category of personal development if it has a deep impact on your life, so it matters, and you can use it throughout the course of your life or in many different situations. Uh, and so what is, what is, what is common? between anarchy and personal development. That's, that's a math symbol for people into math. Um, individualism really empowers you when it, so the, I'm gonna talk about which principles from anarchy help you with personal development. Individualism is the key to personal development because as an individualist, your main focus is yourself and individual people around you Collective is, is kind of a dirty word in our circles, but it's very widespread and it works, but it works in maintaining group cohesion, uh, in sometimes helping the people in power, but it's, it's very much focused on survival. I would say to thrive as a person, individualism is key. So individualism is key. Self-responsibility, another key component of uh, anarcho-capitalism especially. Uh, if you think that somebody else should take care of you, why bother doing personal development, right? Pretty simple. The challenge of non-aggression, I think this is very interesting because the fact that we have committed to not using aggression 
and trying to stay away as much as possible from the fruits of aggression. I mean, it's not always realistic in the moment, but as, as a, as a long-term commitment, means that we have to develop skills and values that we can trade. And that challenge, the fact that we cannot lay down and just, you know, I'm gonna go with the flow, let somebody else take care of me, the fact that we have to trade is a big impetus to personal development. Anti-authoritarianism, especially unearned authoritarianism, I think is another key component to what makes a person excellent in personal development because you got to challenge known, you got to challenge existing knowledge all the time. How many of you, if you think back five years ago, how many of you agree with yourself, let's say 80%? How many of you disagree with yourself? I personally, if I go back five years, I'd have a very hard time even having conversation because so much has changed. This is a key to personal development and is also an important part of anarchism. And I would say the spirit of intellectual adventure. I think we're not just into it because it's the truth and it's the most logical thing, but also because we enjoy, we enjoy the challenge. And I think the challenge of learning about government, learning about ethics, learning about coercion is very similar to the challenge that you can find in learning about the different personal development topics. So I would go as far as saying that apolitical anarcho-capitalism is the only political viewpoint you can read it that is fully consistent with the philosophy of personal development. I would say that if you deviate on any of those previous key principles, you lose. You lose from the effectiveness. You lose from your capacity to really improve your life. And I said apolitical, and this is where my, this is where the question mark comes from. My personal opinion is that there is a point at which focusing on economics and politics to the detriment of other skills hinders personal development. But that is my personal opinion. So I think it's, it very much matters on where you are, how you use it. So instead, I thought I'd put up a framework. I will give you my examples, but you can use it to judge different things on your own. You can use it to determine is what I'm focusing on right now helping me to grow as a person? And I would put, so as you can see, there's the low impact, limited use, wide use, and high impact. These are the two uh, axes. And I would put personal development, as I said, in the wide use and high impact category. So uh, anything from self-knowledge, gonna help you or your life, personal finance, going to help you or your life deeply, productivity, goal setting. And I just put walking in there as an interesting example, like learning to walk as a little child. I would also put that into personal development simply because it's such a wide scale. So you can, you can kind of break out of the box of, of these lists. Like I have my favorite topics, but personal development can be anything that meets these criteria. Next, there are, there are the technical skills. They, again, you can probably challenge me on any of these, and you can say that I know, learning to program gives you a mindset that you can use widely, but I think that there are many, still many technical skills that can be very, very, very high impact. You can earn a lot of money, a lot of uh, respect, a lot of self-esteem, but you can't use them widely. And I think it's imp important to differentiate, and I will, I will tell you why in a second. So programming, engineering, marketing, anything that you will use in a very specific context, but that's, that matters. Next one, I had a little bit of a challenge with naming it, so I just named it Everyday Skills, but it's thing that, things that you can kind of use, they're kind of useful, um, they work in, in many, many areas, but if you were to lose them, it's, it's not a big, Problem. I, I put navigation there, for instance, like walking around in Prague. Uh, I, 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 feel, I think I have a pretty good navigational skill and I can kind of feel things, but if I lost that skill completely, I would just uh, grab, my, grab my Google Maps and I'd just go with it. So, 
So yeah, if I wanted to do personal development, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do these things. It doesn't mean they're not useful, but they're different. And finally, the entertainment section. And uh, you can have some really specialized knowledge that's very fun to have, but it's not particularly interesting. As you can see, I put politics and economics there, but the, does anybody play Skyrim? Has anybody played Skyrim here? Do you know, do you know the game? Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you an example of entertainment level knowledge. So uh, in Skyrim, it's like an RPG, you're fighting people, and if you want to develop your uh, weapon skill, you have to hit things. Well, the best way to do that is to use a companion uh, that you can hit three times and they will not hit you back, so you can just kind of do it very safely. Like, I don't want to waste your time with this stuff. Just, just in this example, you can go really deep into this stuff, or you probably know people who are, uh, video games is a good example. They just go deep, deep, deep. I like to do that too, but obviously it's entertainment. I would say politics and economics after a point become like that as well, my opinion because they no longer have an impact on your life, unless you're doing speeches like this, but uh, <laughs> usually they, 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 will, they will not affect your, like for instance, things like the little, the five people are tied to a rail kind of ethical questions, right? Um, it's, if you like it, if it entertains you, cool, but you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not growing yourself from it. And, so the reason why I separate them is that I think you cannot see it. Okay, this is Admiral Akbar from Star Wars. It's the character that says it's a trap. Um, I'm sorry for those of you who haven't seen it, but I think it's not a trap to focus on any of these areas. I think each of them has an important role in a person's life, but to confuse them is where the danger, where the trap lies in. For instance, I think you can all relate, you probably have seen people who are very professionally successful, but who are miserable in their relationships or in their lives or uh, earn a lot of money but are in debt. And I think that's partly because they are conflating technical skills with personal development. And if you read any HR brochure, people telling you, come, come to our company, it'll always be there. Oh, I've become a better person. I've uh, grown, I've grown a million times now, I'm more confident. More. I saw this in a McDonald's ad, believe it or not. <laughs> They're selling you something that technically I would say is not true. So I would, I would really strive to go for a balance. And if, if, if you look at the activities that you're doing, and when I, I try to look at them too, and I try to go with the budget, okay, how much time am, am I spending? I'm gonna go back. How much time am I spending on technical skills? How much time am I spending on entertainment, on you know, everyday skills and personal development? You wanna, you know, wanna at least be aware of what you're doing and, and kind of allocate it like, like a limited time budget. So, for instance, I. If I were learning engineering uh, 16 hours a day, I would have major deficits in all the other areas and it would, it would cause me problems. Not only would I not be growing as a person, I would also not be resting enough. That, that would just not work out. So I think awareness here can really help you personally a lot. Where do you Yeah, that's a good question. I would, uh, I think, for me personally, they are a combination of personal development and entertainment. That's my opinion. Because some of it is kind of routine, but it just it replenishes you. But on the other hand, if you're, if you're, I didn't put it there, but if you're learning about relationship, communication techniques like RTR, NVC, things like that, that's the place where you use them. So that's, that's, what, that's what I would say. But uh, it's absolutely up to you. I, I, I think you have to decide what your priorities are and how things fit together. And I just want to, how, how's my time, Andre? How much time do I have? 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, okay, so, and then the questions. All right, cool. Uh, I, put this, I put this table in to 
kind of give you pointers. I don't expect you to, maybe Marco will write them down, but uh, I don't expect you to read everything here. Uh, what I want, what I just wanted you to show is that there's so much out there that's, that can really, really help you. And I, I put my, some of my favorite resources over there. And one column that I wanted to put into this, but, but I, I missed, is I know that many of you, and myself included, it's not a central goal for me, but I'm, I'm very interested in how do we get to freedom, right? I think I, think I speak for all of you with this one, that how do, how do we get to free society? How do we reduce coercion? How do, we, how do I personally get away from the government? And how, how, can, I, how can I end it and, and move the world forward in, in a positive direction? And the column missing here, but because we have the time I can talk about it, is that my observation, being in this world for not that long, is that each of these things that seem so divorced from anarchy, like what productivity and anarchy, like you can put it together, but there's, there's still, I mean, it's, it's very different fields, you would say. If you master any of these, it can have such an impact on your, on, on this goal of, of, of getting to freedom. I would say number one, because is, it's because if, you are not free. I mean, this is going to be cliche, but I think it's true. If you are not free, what, what are you doing trying to free the world? And things here lead you to that. Personal finance, imagine, and you know, this, I don't want to make it this like a multi-level marketing thing, but I'm, I'm not selling anything here other than the idea. But imagine that in five to 10 years, you would have so much money stored in a bank and you'd have investments that you could say, okay, now I'm, I retire, which usually doesn't mean sitting on the beaches. That's not what happens to, I talked to some people who've done it, uh, like Jake, for example. Uh, people start working on the things that they really care about. And they say, okay, if sometimes it makes a lot of money, great. Sometimes it makes no money, doesn't really matter. Plus, they can use that extra money for, for charitable purposes or, or for, for helping other people achieve goals like, like supporting a podcast or whatever, Africa, whatever you like. Imagine that. Imagine how much you could do for the anarchist movement if right now you had full free time and, and you didn't have to do anything that you didn't want to for your income. And there are people who are, who are doing this and it's, it's, it's a lot of it is just mathematics, a little bit of focus, getting your income up a little bit, uh, being a saver, knowing how to invest. These are, these are all things that, and I, I wanna be clear here, I'm sure that some of you like are way better than me with this one. So I'm just, I'm just speaking to you broadly. I'm, I have like three months of expenses saved up, so. But I'm just excited by the possibilities. The, the same thing goes with productivity. Again, uh, I see people using Evernote here. Um, Marco, I, I saw you using it. Has it, has it changed how much you can put out? How, like? Yeah, not so much. I don't, I not only use Alberto, but all kinds of tools, but yeah. What, but what would be a percentage difference, would you say, from not using these tools to, to now? Difficult to put it in percentage, but I can say that like having a system mm -hmm. of taking notes and then figure, you quickly find in the notes Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, I do that too, by the way, with my podcast. I just have a nice little list of notes, and then I can, I can pick it up anytime. Yeah, I, my personal experience is that you go from, like, I produce nothing. You know, you know the Adam Smith example with the needles, uh, where he says one guy alone will make a needle per day or something like that, whereas 10 people working together will make 100,000. Well, that's using specialization, but I think something very similar happens when you get into things like getting things done or, or, or even just being mindful of what you're doing, time management, things like that. It just, it's a multiplier. Uh, psychology and self-esteem, I, I, don't, I don't think I have to sell that to you. Like, uh, 
if you're depressed, you're not going to move much in, in terms of the needle of the world or your personal life. Or, 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 or if you have a low self-esteem, how are you going to tell people what's the truth? <laughs> or how are you going to try and convince them if you yourself are, are not, not certain of your own mind? Uh, same story, relationships, entrepreneurship, so much. So much of what's actually moving in the anarchist community, and it's not just talk, is, is technology, like Bitcoin, like what's happening in this place, that's entrepreneurship. Uh, I think a big, a big key to whittling the state away is replacing the services it provides, and, and it's, it's happening every day. Private security, you have this crowd, I'm sure maybe you've seen it, you have these crowd apps where you just, you, 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 send a, you send a signal to everybody else, hey, I'm in trouble. I definitely saw that this it's in, in progress. I don't know if it came out or not. Solutions like this, key component, because then what's the police for, right, if this works? And the final thing, it's a it's specific resource that I want to draw your attention to. Um, it's, it's an ally of mine, you could say a friend of mine. We work together sometimes. And uh, has anybody heard of the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action? Uh, or Shane Radliff? Uh, what he did is he put together, I think, 40, if I remember correctly, different means that are not political that will increase your personal freedom. Things like agorism, things like permanent travel and how you can use the tax advantages from those things all the way to, to peaceful parenting. Little ideas that can help you become more free and get there. And I just want, I want, you, I want to recommend this to you. If you want to get out of the new cycle and if you want to move something in your own life, uh, this is a great resource. It's the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action. You'll, you'll, you'll probably know more, most of it, but it's interviews with people who are actually doing it, and that helps. Yeah, there's a typo there, I just noticed. Okay, um, and value and growth, finally. That's, uh, this is my podcast. Uh, all of these subjects I talk about, so uh, if you want to hear more from me, that's the plug. Uh, that's value and growth. And I usually end my episodes by saying thank you for listening, and I dare you to flourish today. So I, I did that today as well. Thank you very much.